Come on, let's give Jesus the praise. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, let's magnify the name of the Lord. Father, we honor you. We praise you for this is the day that you've made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, speak a word into the heart of your people. Speak a word that will uplift us, that will encourage us. Father, send a word that will revive us. In the name of Jesus, that your will be done in this place. Father, in the name of Jesus, every deaf ear, open it. Father, every heart that is closed, may they be open to receive it. Father, transform us into your purpose. And we give your name all the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may have your seat in the presence of the Lord. We are honored to be back home in the house of God. Amen. We're so happy to be home. And we do give honor to all of our guests again. Thank you so much. Amen. Praise God for all of our guests again. Thank you for deciding to come and worship together with us on this Sunday afternoon. We do thank God for our own husband and companion and all the elders and all the saints and friends. Amen. All the people that work so hard in ministry, I, I want to thank the members of this is Pentecost for being so uh, uh, cooperative and allowing us to be with our brother, Pastor McClurkland, and the loss of his sister. His family, uh, naturally and spiritually, were overwhelmed with appreciation uh, that we were there to help bear it. And absolutely, God brought them through all right. Amen. He brought them through all right. A very high spirited, homegoing service. And um, so we're grateful for that. And and now it's just time to go and be about our Father's business. I want to appreciate the saints who remain steadfast in their callings and steadfast in their purposes of what God is asking them to do and don't need my amens to do it. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. You know who you are and you know what you are consistent and persistent in, that you don't need the pastor's permission. You do it because you love them. Oh, still I, I serve him because I love him. 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 Y'all know it. Y'all could just say that with me. I serve him because I love him. That's why we do what we do. I serve him because I love him. I do. I serve him because I love him. So that's why we do what we do. We do what we do because we love the Lord and we owe man nothing but love. You owe man nothing but love. We're going to attempt to, to try to teach, preach, or whatever with this today. And, it, and I just need to really, really, really be loosed in God to be able to minister it. I need... There's no body in my mind there's, except getting this through as we continue to uh, travel and as we continue to be exposed to so many different ministries and different levels of ministry, uh, the more that we feel the mandate to hold what is right and what God is asking us to be and represent. But there's a lot that's happening in the church. And Father, Father, I ask that you just send a cloud in the place today that would make preaching easy. I ask that you send the wave of your anointing that will lift the people to be able to conceive because you have to be spiritually ready to conceive. And you have to be spiritually ready to hear the word of God. But there's a lot that's happening in the church and there's so much that have been done uh, I won't say absolutely wrong, but it's, it's, it's changing agendas. God help me today. It's changing agendas and it's changing the formula that God have put in place for his people to be blessed. God does not need any of our help to do anything. He doesn't need our help. He doesn't need um, advice. He doesn't need suggestions. He is God and he have mechanisms and things in place that he says if you would just follow that in the end everything will be all right we don't see what we're doing all the time with God and that's why it's called a walk of faith God 
help me today. It's called a walk of faith because faith is the substance of everything I hope for. It's the evidence of what I cannot see. So I've got to trust this invisible God. I've got to trust this God that speaks to me, but yet I can't touch him. I have to trust this God that works things out for me, and yet I can't shake his hand. I've got to trust him. And this walk and this makeup and this character building that God is doing is a faith walk. It is knowing him every day. It is having good days and bad days and up times and down times. It's easy to deal with me in my good days, but can you stay with me when I'm a mess? Can you stay with me when I'm wrecked and don't know what I'm going to do? And God said, yes, I can. Oh, yeah, he the real one. Yes, he can. Oh, y'all need to clap those hands if you caught that in the wind right there. Yes, he can. He is, oh God, I love you. He is, as we say so often, he is the only one that knows everything about you and still love you. You can't hide from God. You can't dress yourself up and impress God. You can't shake yourself and take a shower and think you smell a little better. He said, I know what you look like, smell like. I know your thoughts are far off. I know the numbers of hair on your head. But if I said, your mind, your mind, and no demon in hell can change that. We need to praise him just on that alone. I'm glad I know God. Ah! Oh, I'm so glad that my breath and my life, God, I love you today. I'm so glad that the very being and essence of me is resting in the hands of God and not in the hands of man. Because I'm going to do a whole lot of stuff that's going to make man mad. But God says, yay, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Y'all need to give him some praise. If you know you got him, yes, I got him. And yes, he can do everything but fail. Clap those hands and praise him if you love him. And so God is a God that is about change. And God is a God that is about transformation. God is a God that is about miracles. God is a God that never sleeps and never slumbers. He's never bored. He's never trying to figure out what should I do next. God said, while you're thinking about it, I got a plan already in motion. While you're trying to make up your mind, I already got people working what I need to Oh. Help me praise him because I'm glad God is God. I just want to preach today. Help me to praise him. Help me to praise him because I love him. I love him. I love him. Oh, yeah. God, God, and God is saying that the church, we've allowed a lot of stuff to come into the church, and we've tried to form a lot of stuff, and we've tried to structure a lot of stuff, and we've missed the essence of why God does what he does. It's a wonderful thing for people to get saved and then to put them in positions in the house of God and give them the ability to work in the house of God. All of that is good, but if you've missed the essence of what God is doing, then you might as well go work for IBM because you've missed the potency of why he saved you. And so a lot of things is happening in the body of Christ. A lot of things and structure and organizations is happening in the church, and we're missing the essence and the very potency of why God is doing what he does. Let's go to the word of God. Let's go to 1 Kings 19. I think we want to start around the 15th verse, uh, 19 and 15 through the 16th verse, and then you're going to drop down the 19th through the 21st verse. God, I love you today. And then we're going to try to go to Mark 1, 15 through the 20th verse, and then 2 Kings 2 and 1. Again, the word of God today, we're going to go to 1 Kings 19, 15, through the 16th verse, drop down, you're going to go to the 19th through the 21st verse, and then we're going to go to Mark 1, 15 through the 20th verse, and 2 King 2 and 1. <clears throat> and so as God, and in this end time, and in this latter time, God, I love you today, it is so crucial, and it's so imperative that we understand 
what our position is. I know I've been teaching this a lot, lady, but I can't let it go. It is critical that we understand our true purpose of why he saved us. Understanding that it is beyond man. Understand that why God saved you is beyond me. Understand that I don't have destiny in my hands for you. God does. Understand that there's no bishop, there's no prophet, there's no apostles. We are vessels to do and to lead and guide you in the ways of God, but we don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we cannot curse you if God don't want you to be cursed. We cannot bless you if God does not want you to be blessed. We don't have that much power. We don't have that much authority except he give it to us. And so God is saying that it is critical. It's critical for the saints and the people that are here. If you don't know Jesus, I want you to lift up your antennas in your mind. I want you to lift up your heart. I want you to renounce anything in your mind of what you think church is and who you think God is. I want you to know that God would not have allowed you to step through these doors unless he wanted you to meet something you've never known. Unless he wanted you to encounter something you've never experienced. We're talking about God. I'm not talking about meeting no Mickey Mouse. I'm not talking about no gimmicks and trips. I'm talking about transforming power. I'm talking about supernatural power to go to the depths of your heart find your needs, snatch you out and make you the man or woman of God that he wanted you to be. Help me to praise him. It ain't nothing for God to move the scalp from your eyes. It ain't nothing for God to take away pain and root. Oh, taste that and see that the Lord, he is. Oh, clap those hands, some believing folk that's here. Some believers that's here. In the word of God, what did he say? First King 1915, yes. First Kings 1915. Yes. And the Lord said unto him. Now here was a prophet of God by the name of Elijah. God, I love you today. And here was a man that was on a mission. God, help me to teach this today. Here was a man that was on a mission or an assignment by God. God is a God that's on the move. Don't ever think just because you're not being used by God or you're not experiencing a lot of things that God is somewhere asleep. God is always on the move. God is always conquering and tearing down. God is always saving and delivering. He's not dead. I'm sorry if whatever church you go to, if they may be dead, I don't mean no harm. They need to be revived. God is not dead. Don't ever let a man, God help me to teach this today. I don't care how many men might fall to lust and adultery. I want you to know that God is still righteous. God is still holy. I don't care how many women you may find that don't keep their virtue and keep themselves in the beauty of holiness. I want you to know that God is still a pure God. He is a holy God. We're talking about God. Take your mind out of the mind of man and understand how pure and righteous God is. And so here's this prophet by the name of Elisha who is on an assignment with God. He's on an assignment, and I personally cannot do anything. I'm praying right now about next year and some things about next year. What I do know is I want to go in such a major seat next year that it ain't even funny. I want to go in such a major seat that it's like, hello, do you still exist? Because you can feel not the fear, not the, oh, I want to be ready when Jesus comes, but I feel the burden of the assignment. And I'm asking God, make me ready for the assignment. And so in this last times and these end times and as iniquity is working and iniquity is coming in the house of God like a snake and iniquity is running up and down the pews of the house of God like water it is going to take us being consecrated enough to complete our assignments everybody that is saved by God got an assignment Everybody that have been washed by the blood of the lamb have an assignment. And he gives every man according to his ability, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Your assignment may not be to preach to nations on a worldwide web or anything of that magnitude. But if your assignment is to save your brother, and your sister that lives around the corner from you, honey, make sure you complete your assignment. Your assignment may never be to hold this mic and stand before hundreds of people or fat people to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. But if he's called you to be a witness in the cubicle of your office, then honey, don't miscarry your assignment. Oh, help me to praise him. All of us have an assignment. And it doesn't matter the size of 
the assignment. It matters that you complete the assignment. Oh, John saw a number that no man can number. And honey, those people weren't reached by one person alone. But little by little, the kingdom of God came together. Clap those hands and say, I got to do my part. Oh, clap those hands and praise him, praise him, praise him. And so here's Elisha, and he's on an assignment. Here he had just left, killing 400 prophets and, and, and beating them by himself. But then there was a threat by a woman named Jezebel, a woman that put a threat out on the man of God. He got so scared, he ran up into the mountains, and he was about to miscarry the assignment. But then God had to remind him who he was. God had to remind him who was fighting with him and with him. He said, look at the wind. He said, I'm not in that. Look at the earthquake. I'm not in that. But I'm in a still, small voice. God had to come and reassure the prophet of God. And here we are at the 19th verse or the 15th verse. And what did he say? Yes. And the Lord said unto him. And the Lord said to Elisha. Go return on thy way. You, yeah, you got discouraged, but it's time to finish your assignment. God, help me so. God, help me so. God, help me so. God, help me so. Because we're allowing too many things to hinder our assignment. Now maybe I got to slow down. We're allowing too many things to hinder our assignment. We're allowing too many things to discourage us. We're allowing too many things to aggravate us. We're allowing too many things to distort the assignment that God has put on our lives. And I'm very sorry to say, and please pray for your pastor. And I'm not saying anything personally or anyway, but please don't misinterpret what I'm saying. But when I tell you I'm becoming so full with the assignment I've got to say to God, and I'm saying to him regularly, Father, some of this stuff I cannot explain. Some of this stuff I don't have time to sit down and give in detail. But God, if you've got a set of people, a harvest in the kingdom that understand the assignment, I don't need to explain nothing. Keep up with me with the assignment. Oh, I need some saints. Y'all, y'all should have praised them now ahead of time. I don't have the time to justify why I do what I do. I don't have the strength to explain every iota of what God have asked us to do. But I can tell you this is Pentecost. And to my brothers and sisters at large, I have not gone through what I've gone through to stay in one place. God have not delivered me, kept my mind, saved me to do nothing. Oh! I will do the assignment wherever it leads, wherever it takes us. I need some saints to praise them and say, I'm going to do mine too. Here's Elisha that could have gotten discouraged because he failed God. And because actually, in all due respect, he became a coward to a woman named Jezebel. It feared him. It scared him. And yes, he could have gotten discouraged. But God had to get in his ear and remind him, you are still my prophet. And in all due respect, even though you may have gotten discouraged, I got 700 that ain't never bowed. So you ain't the only prophet. Be glad I'm still talking to you about an assignment. ever think that you're irreplaceable and, and the church ain't going to make it without me. And honey, I'm going to show them something. Uh, that's a laugh from the pit of hell. God is going to show you something. He's on the move. Thank God for your assignment. Clap those hands and praise him. And so we've set up a lot of things in the church today that is decent. And I understand the reason. But because we lose purpose and we lose sight of what God has set up, people get things distorted. Uh, how can I really keep praying and preach this down? Things get distorted in the house of God. You know, we understand the thing about handmaidens and armor bearers and things like that. But it goes to another level of control if you ain't careful. I know y'all don't like me. Many of these churches, and you end up controlling people, and you end up feeling so arrogant. I don't mean no harm. You so happy somebody bringing you water, and you got a desk with a pen. Can't nobody tell you nothing. And you're going to dictate people's future and act like they so remain no servant for you. Listen, wake up, call to the pastors far and wide. All of those people ain't going to stay with you forever, but their calling is greater than yours. You got to train them and birth them and release them. Train them and birth them and release them. Train them and birth them and release them. And this is what God does. So God tells Elisha, what did he say? Yes. And the Lord said unto him. And the Lord said to Elijah. Go return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. He said, now get up. Get up. 
Let me tell you what we got to do. He said, get up and return unto the way of Damascus. And what did he say? And when thou comest. And when you comest. Anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. I want you to finish your assignment. Everything that the, the, the Lord is a chain. He's a, a chain reactor. He is a baton passer. He is a link that his glory and his name never goes down. God links generations together. God links anointings together. God links mantles together. There's never a break in planning of God. There's never a break or an intermission. God links and he connects. He puts people in place. He builds up and he tears down and he makes things click. He brings people together. 99.9% .9 of us in this building today, if it hadn't have been for God, we would have never known one another. And isn't it peculiar how my own brother in the spirit can be closer than a natural brother? Anybody here that understand that? So God sets up and he links gifts. Gifts get linked together. That's what makes us strong in the house of God. That's why I need you to purify your gift because I need it to operate in the pureness that God gave it to you. It's not yours. It's not for you. It's for the body of Christ. And the more that you consecrate and give up the enemy, the purer that gift is that can help me. Okay? I need your gift. I need whatever it is at whatever level. I need it. We are incomplete unless you're walking in the pureness of your gift. And so he says to Elisha, I want you to go back into the wilderness of Damascus. And what did he say? Yes. And anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. He said, here's an assignment for you. I want you to go down and anoint Hazel to be king. Yes. And Jehu, the son of God, Nimshi. God, help me today. And Jehu, yes. The son of Nimshi. The son of Nimshi, yes. Shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And I want you to anoint him to be king over Israel. And what did he say? And Elisha, the son of Shaphat. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, yes. Of Abimeloah. Yes. Shall thou anoint to be prophet I in thy room. I want you to anoint him to be the prophet in your room. And what did he say? Yes. Verse 19, so he departed then. And so what no questions asked. What no, Father, you know, where do they live? Now I got to go where? But immediately he departs. Now, I'm saying that because the reality is the reason why we're not getting enough works done in the house of God fast enough because you move too slow. We're too slow. We're too slow about the things of God. You, if, if your job told you to do something, you would do it next week. But when God said, I'm praying on it, I'm thinking about it, I'm waiting on a confirmation, I am the confirmation. And at the time that you move, God is saying, I've already got in place what you need. When you get there, just move. We wait. We're too slow. We're so full of unbelief. We're doubting. And be careful. I don't have time to be careful. Oh, it's a burden. It's a burden. It's a burden of a work that must be done. God is in a speed. God is in a rain. He don't have time for little trite fights and, and can't get along and don't understand. He said, I have to get somebody else. But I say, move, move. The son said, you got to move. He said, when the Lord get ready, you got to move. You got to move. And we miss things in God. And then what happens is, saints, because you move too slow, what should have been connecting for you, you missed it. You missed it. So now you got to wait. Or God will have somebody else do it. Because you was too slow. It never meant you wasn't anointed. It never meant you weren't called. It never meant that the assignment wasn't yours. But you were too slow. Too slow to believe. Too slow to act. Too slow to move. Too slow. Here's Elisha, and he's on an assignment by God. And when you're waiting for praise, God, I'm going to get better. It's going to get better. When you need so much affirmation and you need so much confirmation, you slowing it down. That ain't nothing but unbelief. Why y'all so quiet? Ain't nothing but either I know him or I don't. And I 
I'm at a state with God right now. I'm so confident in what he's saying that if it's not you, I believe everything will cease. You're not hearing me. But I have to be that confident that if you said it, I got to move. This is a day now you don't have enough spiritual people in the house of God. I understand where you're coming from. There was a day that we were surrounded by spiritual people. There was a day that you could wait for saints of God, praying folk, fasting folk, consecrated folk to give you a word. You ain't finding those in the house of God. Most of the folk is carnal. What y'all say amen? Good old days where you could believe God and get to church and the brother and sister that's in prayer could shake your hand and say, brother, sister, God told me to tell you X, Y, Z, and hallelujah, it confirms it. Ain't enough spiritual folk. So if you wait for all those confirmations, you can, you be it. The church is carnal. We got carnal relationships. We got carnal friendships. Ain't nobody trying to see in the eyes of the spirit. They just want to know, do you like me and I like you and we get along. We believe the same thing. Oh, Baba, I, 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 I. You see it just like me. God, help me to preach this today. And if you speak in tongue any other way, or you come in here, we doing like this. No, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I got the Holy Ghost. He going to let me. Oh, no, my son, no, my heart. He he gonna let me know. Clap those hands and praise him. So the church is a mess. It's just a mess. So you don't know your poor people can't scared, scared to rebuke one another. Scared they're gonna leave the church. Scared they're gonna get offended. Meanwhile, demons steady creeping in, having a party in the house of God. Hallelujah. People don't know what it is to be on an assignment because everybody carnal. See, it was a time in the house of God. You, you was nervous to be around some folk because they was living so holy it checked you. You know, you were scared to just say some stuff. Anything they said, you just said, because you ain't want your spirit to be revealed. Not today. Now everybody looking to see you down. I'm down, got a little carnality there, a little something on the I know y'all don't like me. We ain't looking for the consecrated folk. We're looking for the carnal folk. Hallelujah! Hey, what's up, chick? I'm down right on. Give me some what? Who? What? Huh? We're looking for who's carnal. Who's slipping a little bit? You slip a little bit? I slip a little bit. All right. We down. I know y'all don't like me. I ain't preaching to you if you ain't here. I'm preaching to the nation. We're not looking for those that's on an assignment. Hey, la, 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 shando baha. That understands it doesn't matter if you ever come over my house to eat. It doesn't matter if we ever go shopping. Brother, I need you in the spirit. You're part of my assignment. And we may never go to Denny's. We may never go to Outback. But I know you're on my ride. Open your heart and tell God yes. Clap those hands and tell the Lord yes. He said, Elisha, I want you to go depart now. He said, and go do what I told you to do. And what happened? Yes. So he departed then. So he departed then, yes. And found Elisha the son of He Shaddai. moved and there was Elisha, part of his assignment. There was Elisha. What did he say? Yes. Who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. Now understand that history says that Elijah, the one that's in the field, was a very profit, profitable young man. And a prosperous family. So he's plowing in the field. And what happens? Yes. And he left with the 12. And he left with the 12. You got my shawl, so give me anything. And he left with the 12. He left the 12 oxen. And what did he do? And Elijah passed by him. And all Elijah did. Let me just hold it as an example. All. God, help me today. All Elijah did. Because we want a whole lot of explanation today. Because we're carnal. Can you break down in the Hebrew? What about the Greek? Uh, you got a strong, what about Ebonics? Can you just can't explain it? Because we're carnal. All Elijah did, he wasn't there to enjoy the city. He wasn't there to go sightseeing. He wasn't there to go buy no souvenirs. I know y'all don't like me. He's there on assignment and looking for Elijah. He sees Elijah, and what did he do? Elijah passed by and him. all he did was pass by him. 
and cast his mantle and upon cast him. cast his mantle and kept walking. Explaining nothing. You got to know what that means in the spirit. I'm not pulling you aside for counseling. He had no baba 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 siki ele le lo baha. He had no baba baba siki ele ni yo baba baba shanda le 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 lo baba baha. You got to know what it means. He had no baba baba siki ele ni yo baha. He ki had no baba 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 shanda baba baba siki ele lo baha. He had no baba baha. I refuse to come down to this carnal church. I refuse to come down to this fleshly church. But there is an anointing that words cannot explain. There is an anointing that I don't have time to counsel you, but I've been walking in it. Elijah had this cloak. Elijah had this cloak. He's been laboring under this cloak. He's been prophesying under this cloak. He's made his mistakes, but got back up, still wearing this coat. And all I know, it's a part of everything I do. When I was in trouble, I prayed in my mantle. When I had to go to battle, I fought in this mantle. I got time. I'm on the move. On the sand. Oh, Shonda Baha. Oh, Shonda Baba Baba Sierra and Yobaha. Open your heart and tell God yes. Open your heart and tell God yes. Open up and tell him yes. Open up and tell him yes. Open up and tell the Lord yes. Open up and tell him yes. Open up and tell him yes. Oh, Shonda Baha. Oh, Shonda Baba Baba Baba. Release it. Oh, he had no Baba 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 Siki and the Obaha. He had no Baba 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 Siki and the Obaha. Open up and tell him yes, Lord. I need the church to tell God yes. I need the church to tell him yes. I need the church to tell him yes. He's here, he's here, he's here. He's here, he's here. Catch it up, catch it up. 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 Open up and tell God yes. I need the church to open up and tell him yes, Lord. I need the church to open up and tell him yes, Lord. We want everything. 
everything explained to us. And it's in the spirit. Yes, Lord. Let him in, let him in. That's him. Let him all the way in. Let him all, let him have his way. Let him, he reviving right now. He's reviving right now. He's reviving right now. Tell him yes. He's reviving right now. Open up and tell the Lord yes. I need the church to open up and tell him yes. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. And catch it up, catch it up. He's here right now. He's here right now. Catch it up, catch it up. He's here right now. Elijah went on to say, he didn't turn around and say, I'm sorry, excuse me, sir, can I help you? I'm talking to the sons in the house. I'm talking to the daughters. It wasn't no, excuse me, what did you want? But Elijah knew what it meant when that cloak was thrown over him. He just said, can I get a minute and just go tell my mama and daddy, can I just finish up some business? Elijah said, do what you gotta do. But it's not my job to keep up with you. It's your job. Keep up with me. Open up and tell him yes, Lord. Clap those hands and tell him yes. Let me hear you. Let me hear you tell him yes. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Let me hear you tell him yes. Let me hear you. Let me hear you tell him yes. He said, do what you got to do. I got to keep moving. And that's what God is saying under the anointing. We want all of these carnal relationships. We want all of these carnal kindreds. He said, not what I'm doing in the spirit. You got to catch it up in the spirit. It's like hidden spies. It's like cell groups. Surely if the devil got an underground cell group where they got their own means of communication and planning and plotting all the time, how much more the children of God that we holler, oh! The children of God shout hallelujah! Yes, Lord! Clap those hands and tell them yes! Go to that second Kings. He's still reviving. Go to that second Kings and we almost through. Yes, Lord. I don't want nobody to get this thing twisted. We're moving in another place. And God is saying, you already I've already shown you your assignment. And you're using everything. You're allowing everything to come between me and you. And all I've asked you to do is keep up with the anointing. Open your heart and tell God, yes. I need y'all to clap those hands. He's here. He's here. What did he say, brother? Come on. Second Kings 2 and 1. Yes. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. The Bible says... Elijah went and finished his business, and immediately he left everything. He wasn't poor. He was rich as cream. He left everything and followed after the mantle. He knew it wasn't dropped on me for nothing. No! He knew God didn't allow this prophet to pass my way for nothing. He knew I got to leave everything now and follow after the anointing until I get an understanding about my assignment. God ain't telling you know everything. He's not. Your education can't figure out the things of God. 
And I don't care. It don't have nothing to do with how long you've been saved. It don't have nothing to do with how many churches you've gone to. It don't have nothing to do with nothing except me staying linked to the anointing that's holding my assignment. Elijah dropped everything, left his family, and ran and was serving and keeping up with Elisha. Man of God, I just want you to know the Lord going to do. He ain't hear all of that. He just had to keep up. I know you didn't drop this on me for nothing. There's a code in the spirit. That's why I said earlier, some of y'all that are here today, you ain't in this service for nothing. It wasn't just a nice visit and somebody invited me. But God has set it up for the mantle to be passed. Second Kings 2 and 1, what did he say? Hold on, yes. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. When the Lord would take up Elisha. When the Lord would take up Elisha. Into heaven by a whirlwind. Into heaven by a whirlwind. What happened? That Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Elisha went with them to Gilgath. Here he is serving. And history says all he did was pour water on the prophet's head. Made sure that the prophet's hands were clean and served. And what did he do? Come on. And Elijah said unto Elisha. And Elijah said unto him. Tarry here. All I want you to do is stay right here. We want to know too much. This thing in the church today is crazy. And I don't mean no disrespect. We talk about giving people mantles. And I can't even explain it. But it's a mess. Like we Superman and we're going to give you something. This thing is spiritual. You can't just pick who you like. The more people in the church kiss up to leaders, they act like that's the one. I know y'all don't like me. So you got a lot of kiss up folk in the church. I know y'all don't like me. People kissing up in the church to get the next position. Kissing up in the church to be under the pastor. Kissing up in the church. That don't have nothing to do with y'all. You can kiss up all you want. If God ain't said nothing about you, you're going to stay right where you are. We've messed it up. We've made it look like it's great. I, I, I got the pastor's beef case. All that mess. Y'all say amen. amen. And forgetting and pastors and leaders have to be mindful who's around me. What's the assignment on their life? And if there's no assignment, I don't need you. Because now the enemy going to use you to get too close. I know y'all don't like me. But we want all. We like all that attention. We like all that recognition. And that's why the devil coming in all the time. Because you ain't surrounded yourself with people that's got an assignment for your life. So when the devil get in them and you weak as water, you falling like I don't know what. It was because you surrounded yourself with kiss up folk. Y'all know what kiss up means. Never people that God have said have an assignment. Then we got this thing distorted. People choosing their parents. This is my father in the gospel. This is my mother in God. Well, I understand it and I feel it, but at some point, God ought to tell me who my children are. All that distort me. If you know my pet, my, my daddy, that's my daddy. Nothing, that's my mommy. I'm not going to hold you, rock you. I'm a boxer. Get in the spirit. We're carrying your assignment. Shun the mother of us here in the Omaha. Open your heart and tell God yes. Clap those hands and tell him yes. Oh! Go, Baba. Shun the mother of us here in Omaha. Think about my days with mother. Boy, I could count on one hand how many times mother said something special about us. You want nothing. You ain't you got cut. Or I, I, can, I, I, can, I can't number the number of cuts. I cannot number them. There are more I could be than the hairs on my head, if possible. But I can tell you how many times she maybe said, give now to God. So glad to see Sister Tammy Sister Tam stand up. That's my girl. I ain't get that. Wish I would. You came to Mother's service. It was war, baby. You came in, going down the aisle. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God bless you. God bless you. We sat down. I came to say, all right, what's my assignment here? Do I need to read? Do I need to tarry? Am I going to have to help pray what you need me to do, Mother? I'm here. And you know how I told her without opening my mouth. I never opened my mouth. I ain't calling. Hey, Mother, just want you to know I'm staying at the Shalaka Inn. Mm-hmm. Right up the street from you. Yeah, praise God. How you feel? How you feet feel? 
Praise God. Well, I'll read whatever. It wasn't no communication. Came in. You know why? The mantle was passed. And I didn't know my assignment. I didn't know what God was telling me. All I knew is I had to serve. You know what serve meant? Whatever. It meant whatever. Shoes need to be changed. I got a mother. I can change your shoes. What you need? What you need? He said, from the start, I got a mother. That, I just knew that was my assignment. I don't know how long I got to serve. He said, Terry here. I know y'all don't like me. Pastor, I just want you to know my season is up. Bye. I don't know where that mess come from. I know y'all don't. I'm tearing it all up today. You show me where it says that in the Bible where a potter can tell the clay when their assignment and season is up. I know you don't like me. This is real holiness. I don't know what this mess is today. Just want you to know my season is up. And the Lord is moving me on. But you was never mine. I'm gone, y'all. Do you hear me? I ain't trying to convince folk they my child no more. Do you know I don't have to convince Rissy and Shai who they mommy is? Rissy, mommy. Every day I got to say it. Remember today, who's the mommy? Good girl, Shia. Who? I ain't got to do that. I can stay gone for months. I know y'all don't like me. When I come home, mommy! Oh, I'm connected! Oh, my, 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 son, my, my. Oh, my, my. Clap those hands and tell the God yes. Clap those hands and tell the God yes. He said, Terry! That means you stay as long as I tell you to stay. He said, Terry. Did Elijah turn around and say, for how long? See, because um, I'm kind of hungry. How long we got to be here? He said, tarry here. Tarry mean wait. You just wait. I got a ministry. I don't know why they won't recognize me. Must ain't got one good. Because when you got one, you don't need to be recognized. God opens that door. The other Sunday, I know, I know this man of God's assignment. I know he a wall. I know he's an intercessor. And I came the other Sunday, and I purposely went to him and embraced him. And the Holy Ghost immediately quickened him to pray. Pray for my strength. I know that's that man of God's assignment. I ain't had to counsel him. He got a counselor. I just want you to know, I, I ain't telling nobody nothing no more. You're going to find it in the spirit unless God tell me. He said, Terry here. Stay right here. And what did he say? Terry here, I pray He said, stay right here. Now, Elisha was going to take his flight, and he knew it. And he's going back now through all of his schools of his prophets and checking his work. He's seeing who's standing. He's seeing what's in line. So he says, Terry here. And what happened? For the Lord has sent me to Bethel. He said, because God got me here for a minute. Yes. And what did he say? And Elisha said unto him. Elisha said unto him. As the Lord liveth. Come on, brother. And as thy soul liveth. What did he say? I will not leave thee. Trying to convince him. He had to persuade him. You know why? Elijah, no! My assignment is with you. He didn't pass this for nothing. He said, Where? I ain't going nowhere. He said, All right, as your soul liveth. He said, I'm staying right here. Why we skip church to church to church to church to church to church to church? I know y'all don't like me. The bigger the ministry, you think it's going to make you bigger. You ain't getting but smaller because you're going out of the will of God. What makes you great is when you come down and humble yourself. You're going from church to church to church. We go, I don't understand it. I tell y'all, I tell you, I don't understand it. People go from spiritual father to spiritual father, spiritual mother to spiritual mother because you got mad with your mama. You was never that person. You was never birthed. You can't fix that. You can't fix that. You can't, do y'all know the body of Christ is just that natural and spiritual? When you birth, you are birthed. I say it all the time. My parents in the Lord are dead. Well, the boy is dead. My daddy is dead. I'm not looking for no other mama. You know what that is? Immaturity. Well, I know it's quiet now. That's immaturity and don't want to grow up responsible and that's just what the church is you got pastors they want mothers and fathers I know y'all mad at me now behind my back brother me that's why I'm looking at you because me. the telecast is mad at me now grown 
pastors and things, we want mamas and daddies in the gospel. You need to stop preaching. I got, I got daughters of Zion that could preach if I let them. Ain't that right, Natalie? Looking for something, looking for something. If I'm yours, I'm yours. If you man, you man. He said, tarry and stay right here. And Elijah said back to him, read it again. As the Lord liveth. He said, as long as God is with us, yes. And as thy soul liveth. And as your soul liveth. I will not leave. I'm not going nowhere. Got a whole lot of loyalty out of mess. Nothing's connected in the anointing. This is too late in the day. Do y'all hear me? When I tell you I love you with the, from the, my toes, I love you. Don't get connected with nothing you ain't connected with in the anointing. The day is too late, and you got to come into your gift. You've got to get fixed up, saying, Do y'all hear me? You got to get fixed up for your assignment. Then you got to do it. See, Elisha was getting fixed up following. That was his training. That was his teaching. That was his humility. He had to watch how the man of God handled his gift. And all he knew was, I got the same one. All I know is, I'm a, you got my blessing. You got it. So I got to stay linked. Hey, we drop out of school. You jump in from church to church. You're never getting disciplined. You're never getting trained. You know how far out of the world you got to come to be able to do what God asked you to do? I'm talking to doing in power. You still in elementary. You still in preschool. We're trying to keep you to keep your pants up. I know y'all don't like me. That's preschool. They just pull their pants down on it. Oh, y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't. Why don't y'all say, get happy now. Swallow it. Swallow it and say, just. Don't y'all know that's preschool? Two and three-year-olds keep pulling their pants down. Little girls, little boys. They don't know no better. Y'all all got that revelation, didn't you? You want me to break it down? That's why you keep shacking, slutting, screwing. You keep pulling your pants down, pulling your pants. You ain't ready for no ministry. Oh, clap those hands and swallow it. Oh, you got it. That's preschool. Preschool, you learn how to share. Man, yours. You learn how to hold hands. You learn how to get along. You learn how to repent. Pie out. Yeah. Say so you saw, I saw we, I saw it. Okay, I saw it. You gotta learn how to stop fighting. You ain't ready for no ministry. I didn't mean to go here, but y'all brought me this low. You should have said amen. Who's in the mountain? You brought me this low. You ain't ready. So Elisha had to learn all that. He had to learn character. He had to learn suffering. He had to learn how to submit. He had to watch him go through some things and see how he handled them. He had to watch him bear some things and see how did he come back from it. He said, as long as the soul liveth, he said, I ain't going nowhere. And what did he say, brother? Come on. I will not leave I'm thee. not leaving you. And what did he say? So they went down to Bethel. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel. And the prophets at Bethel. Came forth to Elisha. They said to Elisha. And said unto him. Uh-huh. Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master? See, that's people want to distract you. You know, the Lord will take away your master. That's people that want to distract you from your assignment. People that call you a fool for staying at that church. And you used to have great ministry when you was at Hunchback Church. And you over here, what you over? What department? You ain't over no department. I know y'all don't like me. You know you got gifts. And you ain't over nothing. You don't do nothing. People to distract you. Off. Meanwhile, you know a cloak is over you. You get distracted. Well, I, it ain't I ain't doing nothing. I... I do it. What you want? Oh, girl, you know, you know, honey, what, what you doing? Well, honey, we just came back from Africa. And, girl, we going over to Asia. Yeah, check they fruit out. Because there's folk doing a whole lot of stuff that ain't purified. I'm not telling us we shouldn't do it. We got to do it. What did he say? Come on, brother. Knowest thou the Lord will take away Don't thy you know master. He's going to take away your master. And what did he tell them? From thy head today. Uh huh. And he said, He said, Yea, I know. Yes, I know it. Hold ye your peace. Shut penis. up. Yes, I know. And this is my assignment, not yours. Hold your peace. 
And that's how serious you got to get. Do y'all understand me? Well, I can't, I, can't, I can't even begin to keep giving the parallels and the parables of the desperateness I had with Mother Boy. And I remember at one season, traveling with her, and this was after I had moved away, and I wasn't her nurse anymore. And I remember when the Lord said to me, I want you to start canning all you get. I remember that. I remember when he said that. He said, these services now can all you get. He said, because the day is going to come, you won't have this access. I said, yes, Lord. I worked at American Airlines. I would leave my job at 10 o'clock at night, take a midnight flight, and go wherever she was, get off the plane, Seven, eight, nine, ten in the morning, wherever it was. I didn't call nobody. I ain't try to get a hookup. Hey, girl, what you doing? Well, girl, I'm in your city. You want to go have corn beef? I didn't call nobody. I would go to my hotel room and take my shower and get quiet and go to praying for the service, talking to God. I'd get dressed. I'd get to that service. And like I said, I'd do my slapping, saying hi to everybody as I go down the road so nobody would say I was rude. But I didn't come to see you. It's good to have a fellowship. But I'm here on an assignment. I'm telling y'all the truth. And this is how I was. I would come in those services. I'd sit down. And whatever she needed me to do, I did. If I got a shot, it was night. And if I didn't, it was all right. You know why? I was in school. See, every service for me was school. After service... I didn't go to Denny's and go out to eat with folk. I went back to my hotel room because I had to see God. Are we done? Did I get it? Did I miss it? Father, did I do what you said do? I'd go home. Maybe that next day I'm on the flight, 6 a.m., gone. I did it for years, for years. Some services I go to, and by the time I hit the door, the power would hit me. And I was under the bench or whatever. And they'd pack me out, take me home, and I'm on the plane by myself. I was canning it. I didn't do no lot of talking because I didn't understand what he was doing myself. I didn't do a lot of sharing and what God did for me. I didn't do it. I'm telling y'all what I, I didn't do it because I knew you're not my teacher. So you can't tell me what's happening with me. My teacher is Mother Boy. If God let her tell me, I got it. If not, I got to get on my knees and let the Holy Ghost teach me what was just imparted in me. That's what I did for years. Every now and then, God would let our teacher of the gospel, Mother Stacks, give me a word, unravel it, give me instructions, keep me in check, keep me in line, and I listened. And otherwise, I would shut my mouth. I didn't talk about people because I didn't want nothing to miscarry the deposit I had received. You know when I saw the benefits? I ain't see it then. It was canon. It was canon. I do every minute. If she used me to tarry, watch this. When I would be in the services, she said, come here. Lift your hands up to God. I want you to pray for that end. We pray for that end. Well, I had matured enough to know when the anointing came on me to help lay hands in the service, it was on me to help her. Not as mad and I'm passing out business cards after church. I know y'all don't like me. I'm a wonder in my own soul. I'm a wonder in my own soul. I knew this is she the show. And she the main attraction. Every, all the rest of us is here to help. That's what I did. But as a benefit of the anointing being on me, I got trained in a gift of laying hands. Do y'all hear me? What no reading one scripture. We read 50 scriptures. And you bet not miss one. We was reading 20 or 30. Our, our Bible to read was like this to hold them scriptures. Your fingers were everywhere. It was turn pages. Next one, hurry up. Boom. Next one, hurry up. That's what she said. Next one. Next one. Next one, hurry up. Boom. 
You had to be at it. That was training. Y'all are not hearing me. But it was schooling for the anointing because the anointing was a speed. If you take too long for the anointing to come, take too long, the anointing lifts. When he's ready to move, you got to move. That's why when the Lord, all while we teaching, see in the wind, you can feel when the anointing is ready to come. So all while we teach, when we see you too low, we got to keep telling you to say yes. So when that wind comes, you don't miss it. That's why I can catch them. I need y'all to clap those hands and understand the anointing. Understand the anointing. And when Mother Boy took her flight, by the end we was off in our assignment. We didn't know we would be doing what we're doing. I'm riding today from those same instructions. I'm riding today off of those same impartations. You know how you hold it? It's through discipline. The anointing should develop you. Are y'all hearing me today? The more impartations, the more touches you get under the anointing, it should mature you to handle your assignment so that by the time God releases you, you ain't standing out there goofy, but you was trying. That's why in our church, the Lord told me, he said, don't ever worry about demons clowning in this house. He said, I'll never send a demon in here you can't handle. He ain't done it in eight years. He's never done it. Because you got to get trained in your anointing. What did he say, brother? Come on. And Elijah said unto him. And Elijah said unto him. Elijah, tarry here. Elijah, now he had another place. Stay right here, yes. Terry, here I pray thee. Terry, here I pray thee. For the Lord have sent me to Jericho. Because now I got to go to another place, Jericho, yes. And he said. And he said. As the Lord liveth. As the Lord liveth. As thy soul liveth. No, I'm tired now. When is it my turn? Hmm. I know y'all don't like me. When is it my turn? See, I got ministry too. Why you'll never put me over nothing? Because that's the church today. It's distorted. I'm saying this to, with all the love in me. But we have distorted and we have controlled and manipulated saying instead of birthing them and training them for their assignment. There's not a person in here that owe me nothing. You've got to know, am I the link to your assignment? You've got to know that. You've got to know, do you have the mantle on you? That if I leave, I'll be incomplete. You've got to, you've got to know, Pastor Bennett, you cannot die till I get all that God has said. I got that. Don't you die. I mean, don't you die. Oh, y'all help me praise him. Oh, I'm that desperate. Oh, and so we push people more to man than Jesus. So people don't understand being linked up to their assignment. So that's why when they don't get enough praise, they get discouraged. When they're not recognized enough, they're ready to lead the church. When you ain't asking them to do too much, they don't feel appreciated. It ain't nothing but rejection. Leaders included, pastors included, bishops included, you dealing with a demon called rejection. When you ain't in the mix, and they not inviting you in the mix, and they not pulling you in in the mix, you feel like you're being unappreciated. If it's not your assignment, why do you want to be there? Go! It's called rejection. Everybody want to fit. Everybody want to be alone. Because when it's a need it to be consecrated, it's going to lonely walk. It's a lonely walk to be consecrated. Elijah was by himself. And only had this servant with him. He said, as long as I'm still not going to win Jericho, well, Jericho is where we'll be until you say differently. And what did he say? Come on. And I'm the, almost through, baby. Come on. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho. And the sons of the prophet that was at Jericho. Came to Elisha. Came to Elisha. And said unto he him. He said unto him. Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from he thy He said, do you know he's going to take away your master? And what did he come them busybody demons? And what did he say? And he answered. And he told them. Hey, I know it. Yes, I know it. Oh, ye, your people. You shut up too. Because I know what I'm doing. I'm telling y'all the truth, and I've said this before. I'm, I'm trying to remember. I can't remember anybody ever, 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 ever saying anything to me negatively about Mother Boy. I, I, I'm trying to remember, and I say this graciously. I don't remember. You know why? 
They knew I was a diehard. They knew I'd slice their ear off. I know y'all don't like me. I remember, because mother always had people around her. She always took in people and helped people. This was beyond her hope, Asha Hanana. Mother would take in young girls, women coming out of different situations. She took men in her home. It was nothing for six or seven people to live in their mother boy's house at one time. And you had to all act like family. I watched her kindness. When mother boy cooked, she ain't cooked steak for her and, and, and neck bones for everybody else. Everybody ate the same. Love the same. I remember one day I said to her, I said, Mother, I said, if you never lay another hand on me, I love you just because you mother boy. Because I had to watch her when we left the gifts. Y'all know what I'm saying. When we left the crowds, the anointing would be so heavy you couldn't walk. You literally could not walk. You tried to get up off the floor. The power would knock you. I'm telling you, I'm not telling y'all something I'm throwing off. Y'all got a minute? Y'all got a minute? A place called the Prayer Tower in Gary, Indiana. Blue carpet. There was swamp ground underneath, and they just put wood and carpet over. This place wasn't bigger than one section. One service, this, but it was the Prayer Tower. My most profound deliverances happened on that swamp land. One service, Brother Robinson, the cloud came so thick in that little place that we was laid out everywhere. Nurses tried to nurse, but everybody was laid out. As we started trying to come to our senses, get up off the floor and straighten ourselves out, a sister went to walk out the door, and the power of God knocked her at the door and rolled her back in. We said, my God, you know, we thinking, my God, he ain't through. And that's what Mother would say. She would just sit in her chair. He ain't through. She would just sit there. That woman was a professor in the anointing. She said, he ain't through. So we just sitting there. The next person got up. So they leave, and the saints was talking, you know, hey, all right, God bless you. God bless you. See you. Pow. The power of God knocked them out. Mother said, the cloud is at the door, and nobody can leave until he lives. I don't know this other carnal stuff. That's why I, I ain't trying to do two and three services. I want the cloud to stay and stay and stay. And we had to sit like this until it lifted. And every now and then, somebody would, I don't know, Dalton Thomas, would try to leave, and it would knock him out again. And we had to stay for hours until the cloud lifted. That was schooling for me. Do y'all understand? When you're going after the anointing, you can't explain. Don't you know everybody that's ever been to school for whatever degree they've gone for will tell you it ain't it, OJT. What is happening in the real life is nothing like what they taught me in school. You got to get experience. He says, stay right here and tarry. That means stay because you got to learn something. You got to see something. He told him, he said, I know my master can relieve. Y'all be quiet. Because I'm staying right here. What did the next verse say? And Elijah said unto him. Elisha said unto him. Terry, I pray Terry, thee. Terry, I pray thee. For the Lord have sent me to Jordan. Now I got to go to Jordan. And what did he say? And he said. And he said to him. As the Lord liveth. As the Lord liveth. And as thy soul liveth. As thy soul liveth. I will not leave thee. I will not. Don't follow hard. Out of habit. Do y'all hear me? Do y'all hear me? Don't follow Pastor Bennett in this church out of habit. You follow it for your assignment. Don't be in no auxiliary out of habit. Understand it as your training and move on. Don't promote yourself. 
let God promote you because you finished your class. Don't look for your own fame. Let God do it for you. What you've done in secret, God will reward you openly. Elijah, stay right there. So see, sometimes saints, this is where I'm trying to help us now. Don't be in committed in something. If your heart ain't in it, you're going to still miss. You're still late in school. It's like showing up in class and incomplete assignments. Yeah, you got perfect attendance, but you didn't finish none of your assignments. That's worse. It had been better that you, wasn't, you was absent because at least we can say that's why you didn't finish your assignment. Don't come. Don't be committed. If your heart ain't saying, if I'm going to do youth service, it's going to be the best youth service every time. If I'm going to be here to usher, it's going to be the best usher. Because it's my assignment. What did he say? Yes. And they too went on. They too went on. Yes. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets. So now went. here comes other prophets. See? The prophets understood the laws of the spirit. And they understood to see the prophet of the man of God go up means there's a reward for that person. So you got 50 prophets that are standing around and they were trying to detour. God, help me now. They were trying to detour and discourage Elisha. Understand, people are jealous of you when you got a pant after God. Understand, people, don't you know your friends ain't happy when you're trying to really live saved? Y'all need to say amen. I'm talking to grown folk too. And people will try to bring you back down to their carnal level. Because we all should stay carnal. Because the more spiritual you get, the higher I see you leave in me. So all of these prophets trying to discourage Elisha because they saw his dedication was so strong. And what did he say? Yes. And 50 men of the prophets went. 50 men of the prophets. And stood to view afar off. They stood off. afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. And the two stood by Jordan. Yes, come on. And Elijah took his mantle. Elijah took his mantle. And wrapped it together. And wrapped it together. And smote the waters. And smote the waters. And what happened? And they were divided hither and They were and divided thither. hither and thither. And what happened? So they that went over on dry they ground. They that went over on dry land. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. When they were gone over. When they were gone over. And Elijah said unto Elisha. Elijah said unto Elisha. Come on, brother. Ask what I shall do. He said, all me. right, I'm getting ready to go up. You ain't follow me all this time and be committed for nothing. I need some desperate folk to understand. I didn't suffer this. I didn't go through the persecution. I didn't leave my family. I didn't leave my friends. I didn't go through this for nothing. Oh! He said, but what is it that you want from me? And what did he say? Ask what I shall do for thee. Ask what I shall do for thee. Before I be taken away Before from I thee. Before I get taken away from you. What happened? And Elijah said. And Elijah said. I pray thee. I pray thee. Let a double. Let a double portion. Yes. Let a double portion of thy spirit. Yes. Come on. Be upon me. Be upon me. Yes. And he said, and he said, thou hast asked a hard he thing. He said, you ask a hard thing, yes. Nevertheless, nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken up, if you just thee, see me when I get taken up, yes, it shall be so unto it thee. It shall be so unto thee, and what happens? But if not, but if not, it shall not be it so. It shall not be so, yes. And it understand. Came. And we really are closing. He said, Elijah said. All I'm doing is what God told me to do. God told me to go and get you. God told me to throw my mantle on you. Now, honest to God, the rest is between you and God. I've done all, all that God asked me to do just for you. Every impartation. I gave it when he told me to. Every time I wept and prayed, I did it when he told me. But don't look for me to give you every answer. Your answer is in the same God I serve. Your answer is in the same God I'm committed to. Your answer is in the same dedication. Open your hearts and tell God yes. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet and praise him. 
Stand to your feet, stand to your feet. We want to know a lot of stuff. And God is saying, did you get the portion? We want our leaders to do so much. I, please, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not demising the role of a pastor. I'm not pampering and softening. But the job is to throw the mantle. And Elisha said, I've done what God asked me to do. The rest is up to you to keep up. I'm not going to explain everything. I definitely can't slow down. You know why? Elijah was preparing for his own chariots. Elijah was preparing for his own whirlwind. He said, now I ain't got the ability to understand you and what God is asking me to do too. But I tell you what, because I know I made up my mind. Because I made up my mind what I'm going to do. I made up my mind what I'm going to see. I made up my mind I'm not going to take down. If you hold on, you'll get that double portion. Open your heart and tell God yes. Clap those hands and tell God yes. And what did he say, brother? Yes. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. That as they still went on. That as they still went on. And talked. And talked. That behold. That all of a sudden, behold. There appeared a chariot of fire. See, because Elijah, he didn't know when he was going to get caught up. He said, there appeared a chariot of fire, yes. And horses of fire. And horses of fire, yes. And parted them by asunder. And they parted asunder, yes. And Elijah went over by and a whirlwind. And Elijah went over by a whirlwind, yes. Into heaven. Into heaven. Come on, brother. And Elijah saw it. And Elijah saw it, yes. And he cried. And he cried. My father, my father. No, 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 no. They never had to talk about it. They never had to say, you know you're my spiritual child. You know I'm birthing you. There never had to be a discussion. All that I know is something is connected. And it feels so natural. Something is connected that I can't that I can't seem to break away. When he saw him go up, he said, Oh, my father, oh, no, my father, oh, my father, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. We need to praise him right there because God is reviving right now. God is reviving right now. Come on, come on, come on. is restoring right now. Hey, I know, ba, 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 shando, ba, ha. Somebody is catching this up right now. Somebody is catching it. Oh, ba, 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 shando, ba, ha. Some, ba, 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 siando, ba, ha. Somebody, oh, ba, 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 shando, ba, ha. Somebody is catching it up. Oh, ba, ba, ha. He said, oh, my father. My father. He said, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And then Elijah was caught up in heaven. He never saw him no more. But the thing that was wrapped around him, that was caught up in the same glory, he was nothing. Elijah grabbed it. He said, now let me try this thing out. If I came over on dry water, 
then I should be able to go back over on dry water. He smiled and walked over on dry land. The Bible said the other prophet said, where did Elijah go? He said, he's gone. They said, what I mean, what happened to him? Now, Elijah, he got the mantle. He got the anointing. He finished his school. He could go about his business. The other prophet said, yeah, but I mean, did you see him? He said, he went up. He's going, they said, well, maybe somebody should go look because maybe some animal or something got him. Maybe he around. So he said, y'all go ahead. I'm getting on my knees because I know what I got. They came back to him and said, Elijah, you're right. We couldn't find no sign of him. He said, no, I know you couldn't because everything he was, I got it now. I got it in the Woo! He said, I'm carrying it in the over my shoulder. Woo! That's what the Lord is saying to some of us that are here. The Lord is saying, and you can say with me, brother, the mantle is on you. And you can't deny it anymore. You can't keep looking for all of these explanations. You keep going and understand that all the devil is doing is trying to discourage you. And God is saying, but you ain't going to get it from no man. All the instructions and all of the leading of why I saved you is coming from God. In Mark Jesus was on his way on a journey. He saw Simon Peter and him. He said, hey, come here. Y'all come with me. He said, drop your nets. The Bible said they immediately left and followed Jesus. You know what he did? He threw his mantle. He said, now come on. Today, there's some of y'all that are here today. He said, you're idle. You're just idle in the world. You're just there. You're idle. You're just doing stuff, trying to hang. God is saying there's a mantle that he's dropping today. Is the saints praying? Are the saints praying? Finish Yvette, and I'm sorry, I just want to use her as an example. I believe we had over 30 people yesterday, praise God, yesterday passed out coats and Come here, ministry, Beth. Come here. Stand right there. Ministry, Beth was down to 76 pounds. Living under the bridges, was it of Sacramento? She told the women in the prison, when we go visit, she said, I don't wore every prison color there is. She started naming them. And they went to cracking up orange, she named them. She said, I've worn them. But then she got saved. The Lord blessed her one planet, one water. God had the increase. The ministry that God put her in, they had a drug program, all of that. God saved her, filled her with the Holy Ghost, healed her up, and gave her a prison ministry. Because her assignment was beyond a pastor. There's nothing wrong with the pastor, but the gift had to go deeper. That's why the Bible said, I give you pastors, it's plural, because they can take you to as far as they can. And sometimes you may have to go to a higher gift. That don't mean something was wrong with that pastor. When Minister Yvette came to us, what year was it? 2000. 2000. I was wet behind the ears, pastoring, but I had vision. I knew what God wanted us to do. She said, she brought this huge stack of papers and stuff, and she said, I used to do prison ministry where I was. She said, the Lord told me, lay this at your feet. She said, whatever you want to do with it. 
She said, I don't have to be over it. The Lord just told me, lay it at your feet. I said to her, I said, well, it is part of this vision to have a prison ministry. But that's your assignment. And I said, so, I just want to undergird you. I want to support you. I want to lead you so that you can finish your assignment. Ministry bed, and I, and I say this because sometimes it's just good to give honor. Where honor is she's one of the few that moves in her assignment without any shot up from her pastor. You know why? I didn't come and get her under that bridge. I probably would have walked by her. Y'all not hearing me. Y'all not hearing me. I probably would have grabbed my kids from her. Y'all not hearing me. Oh! But she recognized I need a greater anointing though. And now God is opening up doors and opening up doors and opening up doors. Why? It's my pastor. Move on! I got my assignment to open up and tell God yes. Open up and tell God yes. Clap those hands and tell them yes, Lord. Come on, get your assignment. Come on. Hear me, church. Hear me. Hear me, church. Hear me. Oh, mama. Shut the Oh, you know, mama. Oh, mama, mama. Shut the baha. Shut the baha. See you in the did she have to get trained in some things over? Yes. Did she get cut on some things? Yes. Did God birth her again? Yes. And everything that was poured into her, she said, thank you, Pastor. Now I can go give it in my assignment. I don't need you. Do your thing. I got mad. And it's all in order. And it's all in order. I, I, are they not guessing who her pastor is when I go down there? I don't ever go. They go. They not, I'm not going and they saying, thank God for the elder reverend missionary evangelist Bishop Yvette. She said, no, here's my pastor. Because it's order. I'm late, but pastor, I know you're my pastor to help me do my assignment. Oh, can the church grow up? Can the church grow up? Can we grow up? Can we grow up? Can we grow up? But there's somebody here today. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. It's just a matter of moments now. You've been idle for a long time. You've been idle for a long time. And you've been searching for a whole lot of stuff. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, all you need to do is come on. Get fixed up for your assignment. Come on, get the guilt off, get the shame off. Come on and praise God. Get the guilt off, get the shame off. Get the enemy out of your ears. Get the enemy out of your mind and get fixed up for your assignment. Come on and praise God for these souls. I want you to come. I want you to come. I want you to come. Come on and praise God for these souls. Oh, I need somebody that's happy to see some souls coming to get ready for their assignment. Come on, sweethearts, come on. Come with boldness to the throne of grace. You're coming for your assignment. You're coming for your assignment. That's right. You kneel down to your king. This is your king. This is your king. You owe me nothing. You owe him. You owe him. You owe him. You owe me nothing. You owe him. The hour is too late. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. The hour is too late. You've been idle too long. You've been idle too long. Come on. Let God fix you up for your assignment. Get cleaned up. Get trained. Get settled in the house of God. Stop running from him. Stop acting like he's the bad man. He's not the bad man. All that God is doing is waiting on you. You come. There's still some more that's here. There's some more that's here. Let God heal you. Let God open up that door of prosperity so you can stop struggling. Let God heal your family and heal your mind. Let God bring your marriage and family together. He does all of these things 
for his assignment. Let God make you whole. Let God make you whole. Our elders are getting ready. Those of you that are on the altar and at your knees, that is the right place to be. You talk to God. This is between you and him. Pastor Bennett don't know nothing about you but what he shows me. And that's all I know. But he knows you. He's seen you. He's carried you. He's forgiven you. He spared your life because of your assignment. Did you not know when the hand of God is on you, death can't take you? If God have said they have not completed their assignment, did you not know death can't have you? Settle in the will of God. Settle in the will of God. The way of a transgressor is hard. That's all, baby. That's all that's been That's all that's been happening. It's been hard just because you ran from him. That's all. That's all. That's all. Mercy is all on you. It's all on you. Mercy is all on you. It's all on you. It's all mercy is all over you. Mercy got you. Mercy. No, that's why sicknesses didn't get you. That's why diseases didn't get you. Woo, I keep seeing you escaping stuff. It's been mercy. I see a cloak of mercy. I see guns that didn't kill you. It's been mercy. Come on home. Come on home now. Trust the Lord. I hear him saying, just trust me now. You can't handle this. Trust me. Trust me to walk you through. All of our elders are coming down. Our ministers are coming and praying. We're praying. We're praying. Those of you that are at this altar. And if you do not know the Lord Jesus or you need to give your life back to him, ministers, help me. We're going to say the repentance prayer. And you're saying this because it's between you and your God. Yes, he's going to heal it. He's going to heal it. I know. I know. If he could just fix that, I know it. I know, babe. It's been a long time. I know it's been so hard. It's been so hard. It's been so hard. If he would just heal that, it'll be all right. I know. I know. I know. I know. And he will. He will. It's been so hard. Our hands are lifted. All of you that are around this altar, you're going to repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus. And all of our ministers, we're saying it as a body. Lord Jesus, forgive me for all I've done. Lord, forgive me for my transgressions. I want to hear you. Forgive me for my transgressions. Forgive me for my disobedience. Now, Lord Jesus, I open my heart ah, only to you. Come in now and heal me. Come in now and feel me. Come in now and use me. I am yours. I am yours. Use me for your glory. I acknowledge your son, Jesus. I acknowledge the death of the cross. Now, Lord, I thank you for my redemption. Ministers, get down there. I thank you for my redemption. I thank you for my redemption. I need the saints to help me praise them. I need the saints to help me praise them. Deacon Hall, I need you to go down there and help me pray. Minister Deacon Hall, go down there and help me pray. Come on and praise God for these souls now. Ministers, we're praying with them. We're praying with them. Daughters of Zion, we're praying. We're praying. Sister Becky, help me pray. Help me pray. We're praying with these souls. Come on. Come on. Come on. We're praying with these souls. We're praying. 
We're praying it's between you and your Savior. It's between you and your Savior. You're talking to him because he's fixing you up for your assignment. He's fixing you up for your assignment. He's fixing you up for your assignment. He's fixing you up. Come on and praise him, saints. Come on and praise him. Now, Miller, can you get them down there for me? Come on and praise him. He's healing our heart. The Lord is healing our hearts. The Lord is healing our hearts. The Lord is healing our hearts. Come on, come on. You're here for you. You're here for you. You're here for you. You're here for you. Come on, come on. Elder Taylor, you mind going down there for me? You're here for you, the sisters and brother at the end. Come on, come on, come on, saints. Come on, God is destroying yokes now. God is mending families. Heal me. Heal me and wash me over, Jesus. Heal me. Heal me and wash me over, Jesus. Heal me. Heal me and wash me over, Jesus. I want to be clean. 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 Wash me. Wash me. Wash me. Wash me all the Jesus. Wash me by the blood of the Lamb. Come on, come on, come on. Wash me by the blood of the Lamb. Wash me by the blood of the Lamb. Wash me by the blood of the Lamb. Wash me, Jesus. Wash me, wash me. 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 Get in my belly and wash me, Jesus. Get in my belly and wash me, Jesus. Get in my belly and wash me, Jesus. Wash me, wash me, wash me, wash me. Wash me, wash me, wash me, wash me. I want to be clean, oh Lord. Yeah. I want to be clean, oh Lord. 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 Help me, help me, help me, help me. Help me, Jesus. 
Jesus, don't leave me in this state. Help me, Jesus, don't leave me in this state. Help me, Jesus, don't leave me in this state. Just help me, Jesus, don't leave me in this state. Just help me, Jesus. Just help me, Jesus. Just help me, Jesus. Our hands are lifted. Our hands are lifted. Oh, some of you that are at this altar will never be the same again. You 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 will never be the same again. Ooh. Your hands are lifted. I know, I know this is a long service. Oh, but we got to get the church right. Follow hard after him. Shando ba 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 ba. See it at the To all of you vessels that are here, we want to be back here in prayer. And you're seeking God because you're getting direction for your assignment. You were not just put here. You have a work to do. You were not just put here. You have a work to do. Woman of God, do thy work, saith the Lord. Stop apologizing for what you feel your connection is with your pastor. You know it is a mantle. And walk in walking thou shalt teach, saith the Lord. And walk in walking. Our hands are all lifted to God. It's all lifted. Our hands are all lifted. Get ready. This is Pentecost. As we're coming towards the end of this year, when I tell you, please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you, follow hard after God with me next year. I'm begging you, get ready to give it up. And let's get ready to turn this world upside down. And I mean it. I mean it. Get ready to be used by God. I mean it. I mean it. For those sweethearts that are at this altar to now, now, we want to take your name and number so we can stay in touch with you. We want to see about you. We want to pray with you. If the enemy tries to bring discouragement to you, we want to help you fight him. We want you to hold your charge. We want you to hold your charge. Sister Chick, get ready to go on this consecration with me because you've got to do what God told you to do. Next year will be a good year, saith the Lord. Next year will be a blessed year, saith the Lord. It will be a blessed year. Yes, Lord. We're preparing our hearts. We're coming back here. We want to be back here in prayer on tomorrow. For all of these vessels, we're getting your names and your numbers. To all of the saints far and near, get ready. Let's do God's assignment. I speak even to those in streaming faith into the airways. Don't let nobody, let this camera be right here, wherever it is. Don't let nobody stop your assignment. No man have heaven or hell to put you in. Stay in order. Stay in order of your leadership. I'm not telling you to go wild. But when I tell you look to no man for clarification, go to your king. And he will give it to thee. It's time now to be about our father's business. Come on and give the Lord some praise. Come on and give the Lord some praise. Everyone standing. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you and praise you. Hey! We thank you for what you've done in this place. Thank you for every soul you reclaim, God. 
We thank you for every gift you revive, God. We thank you today. We thank you for your word, God. Hey! And we thank you for the messenger, God. Lord, we ask that you be a fence all around us. Cover us with your blood. Keep your hand of protection upon us, God. Keep us from every hurt, every harm. Every danger, seen and unseen, keep us out of folly. Keep us with a mind stayed only on thee. And God, we promise to give your name the praise and give your name the glory. Until we meet again, God, we thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We are dismissed.